I mean, a lot of things. We, we went 155 plays out there today. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things uh, that I don't want to talk about because I don't really want to say until I watch the tape. Um, you know, really the, the key thing about it is, and I thought about this this morning yeah, as I was walking in and you know, seeing the building under, you know, about to come down and you know, ripping things down and whatnot and, and building a new building and, you know, it really, you know, building building a football team each year is no different than that. And you know, as as that as the edge comes down and the fanning center starts to to come up, and you know, they're building the foundation first. And uh, they'll build the foundation. They'll pour the footers, and you know, start to build the block by block, uh, and and work on the exterior, work on the, the things that, that support the building, that build the building for for to be able to endure a long period of time and endure a lot of things and. Uh, it's really no different than, than building a football team in that we're, we're building a team uh, right now that we hope can be a competitive uh, team throughout the fall. But right now it's about laying a foundation. It's about putting the bricks down. Uh, and every day is laying a series of bricks. And, you know, <clears throat> the foreman of that construction site at some point is going to walk over to the guys over there working and say, hey, take those last five rows down. They're not straight enough. And they're going to have to, you know, dig, them, dig it out, tear them down, and rebuild it. Right? Because – the person that's in charge of building that building has an expectation that when that thing's completed, that it's going to be perfect. It's going to look just like the drawings. It's going to be exactly like they've talked about now for two years. So that, that's really the, the, this, the way I see this this going right now. We're, we're building a foundation. There's things that go well, right? And then sometimes you have to go tear a few things down and, and, and rebuild them again in, in order to get them right. Because it might look okay, somebody might not be able to see it, but all of a sudden the building gets finished, you're ready to put the final pieces together and something doesn't fit, something doesn't work, something doesn't go together. So you've wasted a lot of time. So to be able to point those things out, to be able to self-assess uh, individually, collectively, uh, starting with me, down through the coaches, through the team, uh, challenge the players to be able to do that, uh, to focus on what they have to improve on, not what they did well. All right, yeah, you want to see what you did well, but that's also the expectation to do it correctly. So. Uh, it, it just those things hit me when I was walking in this morning. I was like, "Dang!" Probably because that's what I wanted to be was a construction worker and uh, <laughs> you know, working on those types of projects and whatnot. So, I guess I am still doing the same uh, type uh, type duty a lot. But no, we had uh, a lot of football out there today. It was a great day, good weather. Um, you know, we had family day for the players today. We also had a, uh, a really good turnout of recruits. Um, you know, that, that's exciting to see. There hasn't been a day of practice so far that we have not had an absolutely great turnout of recruits coming here, um, really good football players, their families, uh, some former players out there, uh, former teammates of mine. I mean, uh, Keith Fox, uh, Daryl Smith were out there uh, watching Tooch over there with the linebackers the whole time. So it was good to have guys that have, you know, that, that have had the careers and experience those guys have to, you know, be connected still to the program and, and, and want to see those guys have success and, 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 and take them under their wings. So. That was exciting. Uh, you know, we had four uh, full field, move the field, where we started, you know, the minus 20 yard line, uh, worked the full field. You know, in those, <clears throat> you know, that was ones, twos, and threes. In those series, it was you know, those eight series, seven touchdowns and a field goal. Uh, then we did a situational uh, rack series there where it was eight series of uh, second down, play the third, uh, where there's a second down, uh, second 10, and then you, you Whatever the third down, wherever it lies, you play it. I thought the defense really stepped up in that situational period. Uh, you, know, you know, being able to play the call out, uh, made some good one on ones, uh, one on one tackles, one on one plays. Uh, I thought they did a good job. Uh, you know, as the, uh, as the scrimmage went on, I thought the guys up front did a really nice job of containing the quarterback. Early on, there were some some holes in there, some seepage. Um, we know that's been a m major, major emphasis every single day of you know how you rush in the passing game. That's why we have those second ten play the third series. All right, he's able to coach those things up, and I thought uh, Zeke, Horace, and those guys did a nice job of uh, you know doing their job and you know their responsibility within the call and containing the quarterback and be able to pull him up a couple of times. So it's good to see that. Then we went eight series of short yardage. I feel like that's something that we've got to really build the toughness and, and build the identity of a football team through you know as we say when 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 everyone when it's third and one or third and two and everybody knows you're going to run the football, can you stop it? And uh, when everybody knows you're going to run the football, can you get the first down? So. Um, the, the, the guys I thought really showed up in that period, I thought the, I thought the O line did a, did a good job. Um, D line got some penetration on place, but I thought those running backs ran their tails off in that period. They really did. And that's what I wanted to see. 
Um, had some guys in there, you know, uh, seeing you know, some of the young guys, Anthony Carey, seen, uh, Evan Dickens, had some really good day today. Uh, and Chad Alexander uh, was able to, you know, a guy that can run run the way he does and to be able to you know, run behind his pads today, you know, pick up some of those tough yards. I was really impressed with the way those, uh, those young backs uh, played today overall. And uh, a lot of things to clean up with them just as far as alignments and techniques. But I was waiting to see those guys have an opportunity to uh, cut loose a little bit, and I thought they did a nice job. Um, you know, but they won a lot of blitz today. Pretty vanilla defense. Uh, we just want to see who can play. Uh, obviously, that'll change as the next week rolls around. Um, then we ended up with four series of, uh, um, of of move the field, really in the plus area. We started on the 35 or the 30, working down into the red area. I uh, thought it went back and forth there. Uh, thought it started to get sloppy at the end. Uh, details, uh, guys. Uh, you know, pad level up front, both sides of the football, uh, some of the ball ball exchange with the, you know uh, the quarterbacks and the running backs, uh, especially with the young guys in there. You know, not 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 even close to enough reps with those guys to be at a, a level to be able to uh, count on yet. And um, you know, we had some touchdown, you know, a couple touchdowns in that area. But and then uh, Mari Harvey showed up again with a blocked field goal down in that area, which he really actually should have had two of them today. And um, you know, was really close on the one, and then the, the second one was able to squirt through. So, uh, credit him for going all out at the very end. Very, you know, after 140, 150 plays of practice, scrimmage, he was still going hard and, and was able to get a blocked field goal. Uh, but also on the other side of the ball, we got to work on the protection on the edge and the wings, and be able to, and we can't we can't allow that to happen. We can't allow it to get down in the red area and, and not come away with points. So, you know, there were a lot of ebb and flows in it. You know, we had uh, field goals and PATs were uh, were a go today. Um, other than that, we'll continue to work on the kicking game through this next week. It'll be a heavy, uh, heavy installation this week of situational football. Uh, we're just starting to get into the third downs in red area right now uh, with the team. So, all in all, uh, you know, we had some guys get banged up, been banged up, but that's what spring practice is. I mean, when you, when you play a tough physical brand of football, uh, you know, those things are going to happen. When you play it the right way, but the more you play, the more you, you, you become accustomed to it, and you, you, your, your bodies become accustomed to it. All right, the the longer you longer you'll be able to play, and, and, and more you'll be able to you know number one endure, but more importantly dish out. Uh, you know I think we went 40 plays live, on, uh, not live, 40 plays of uh, tackle situations on Wednesday, and then another 155 today. So right, we'll have some tired puppies chasing the Easter Bunny around tomorrow. But uh, like I said, we're we're building building the foundation right now. Uh, I think we I think we have a chance to be a good football team, but right now we're nowhere even close. Uh, we're, we're, we're we've got a long way to go. Uh, challenge the guys each and every week to treat it as one week of of, uh, of improvement, and then be able to sit down and uh, when we get together on Monday morning uh, to self-assess and, and, and those guys look themselves in the mirror and say, you know, did I get better this week? Did I not get better? And what do I have to do to get better this next week? So, all in all, uh, it's a good day to be out there for the first scrimmage of spring. Exciting. Uh, whenever football's out uh, uh, in the stadium playing, um, but got a long way to go. Got a lot of coaching to do. Uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of penalties. I thought that was a positive today for a first scrimmage. Uh, you know, the ACC had a crew out there. You know, I think there was 26 officials out there today with uh, different guys working, different crews working. You know, they were coaching their their guys up as well. So it was good to have those guys here and be able to answer questions and, and talk through things as they occurred on the field. So uh, it's coaching for them. Good for our players to go up and, and, and get feedback from the officials when things take place. So they're hearing it in real time. Um, you know, so it's a learning experience, and I thought we had a good learning experience today. I know you, a couple of the newcomers are banged up or got here and had some things to get cleaned up, but I was just curious if anyone, you mentioned Anthony, but any anyone else has caught your eye through these first week, or I guess two weeks now of practice, and, and kind of encouraging maybe seeing Something from uh, Jackson's been one that people mentioned. Hamilton, um, just different guys maybe that, that caught your eye today that are new. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't want to miss anybody. I'm trying to go through. Uh, uh, Jameson Riggs uh, played left tackle with the ones today for 100 and whatever plays. I uh, thought he did a, uh, you know, a, against a pretty static defense um, for the most part. Uh, I'll have to watch the tape and see, but I thought you know he didn't show up as making. You know, kind of those, those those killer mistakes out there. So uh, I'll know more tonight when I have a chance to watch it all. Uh, he was running with the ones. Um, Anthony uh, Evans, not a newcomer, but he was good to see him out there. Jackson Halls, I mean, he's a big old sucker across the middle now, especially down when you get down in the red area. I mean, that's that's a 
that's a big old target and you know they can fall forward for you. Um, you know, uh, Tana, you know, working with the twos at center, uh, you know, been impressed with him so far. Uh, I think uh, you know, Harrison Moore, I think all those young old linemen have, have a chance to be really good. I think uh, Harrison Moore working with the twos, some. Um, Good to see Leo back out there. I know he's not a freshman, he's not, but he is a newcomer <laughs> right now. So <laughs> it's good to see Leo out there. I mean, he, and he's not just making plays, and, and but he's trying to play physical and, and impose his will in, in, in all that he's doing. So it's good to see him. Uh, Warren Burrell, um, Saeed Gibbs on, on the defensive side. Uh, you know, Jackson has flashed you know, throughout the weeks. Uh, didn't notice him as much today, but it's not because I was just, you know, one watching him in particular, uh, I think all in all, we've got to get off blocks better on the defensive side. Um, you know, we've got to be able to strike and use our hands. Uh, uh, we've got to continue to develop our depth on that side of the football. Um, but you know, some of the fits by the backers, you know, some of that, you know, depends on who's in there with you in the front as well. Uh, but I think the guys have been rolling with uh, with that group. You know, Jackson, uh, Kyle, Trent, uh, and Tajay. I mean, all four of those guys have a chance to really help us and, and play a lot of really good football for us. But there are a lot of reps in front in front of them between now and uh, you know now and the end of August. So we need every one of them we can get. Uh, who am I missing? Some of the new guys out there. Uh, Jordan Boyd, you know Jordan. Jordan flashes. You know uh, he can run. He's athletic. Really, he's going to be a really really good football player. Uh, every day is a new day for those guys right now, though. So it's good to see them in a little more of a, a uh, you know simulated scrimmage out there, where you know it's not the full playbook to really to see who can go play, uh, because the next one will be a little bit different when it comes to, uh, in regards to that. I know you said you kept it pretty vanilla on defense today, but how have you felt through the first couple of weeks of spring that the defense is adapting to the new coaches and the new scheme and everything? Yeah, well, I'm really pleased to have those guys here as coaches. Number one. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a scheme that I'm very familiar with. Um, not from not only from just seeing it in the league for a couple of years and, and, and following those guys, but uh, very similar to the scheme that uh, uh, you know, front coverage wise that, that, that Coach O'Leary ran for forever uh, in, in, when I was with him. So to be able to know it and, and, and you know know the ins and outs of it and, and know the expectations of it uh, and be able to really be comfortable with that. Is a good fit on this team. You know, it's about a balance of offense, defense, and kicking game. It's not just about one side of the ball and what scheme they have. The schemes all have to go together, but they also have also have to be personnel driven. I mean, you can't just say you're going to run a scheme on defense and not have the guys to do it. So, you know, as we continue to recruit uh, towards the scheme, uh, we'll continue to improve with it. They've taken the coaching. Uh, I thought there were times today where they might have lapsed back a little bit uh, and had to pull them over to the side and talk to them a little bit and. Uh, and then that was the time when we went into that situational, the second uh, second 10 play the third, and I thought they really stepped up and did some good things. Um, but like, you know, it's like anything, it, it's going to take time. But man, these, they are, they're, the kids are all in as far as the coaching goes. I mean, they're in here, they're, they're, they're wanting to come in and get extra time, and you know, they're, they're in the meetings. I go through and sit in all the different meetings throughout the days, and I mean, they're attentive, they're asking questions. I mean, they're, 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 and they're being coached up, they're being taught. Uh, you know, the job that, that, that Jess Simpson has done and uh, Kyle Pope, I mean, Jess Simpson is a phenomenal teacher. Uh, he's a phenomenal football coach, phenomenal person. Uh, you know, Tyler is a, uh, I think I said it before, you know, it's hard to believe he's 35 years old out there uh, as a DC. I and mean, he's, he's almost like the, 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 the somebody's blowing up up here, getting a phone call. Uh, uh, and then the, I, th I think the guys on the back end, you know, really shown. Uh, I mean, Mari Harvey's really continuing to improve. Um, he's one that's got to continue to stay in the moment of every play uh, and not let those, not let that, some of the external things get to him. And that's why I was saying he could have had two block field goals and then, uh, you know, snapped it, snapped out, and then towards the end and got a, got one that he probably should have had two of them in the scrimmage. Um, Warren Burrell, I mean, just the, the 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 coaching that he's getting from Ricky, uh, you know. In accepting the coaching, so I've been all in all very pleased with uh, the receptiveness to the coaching, the coaching that's taking place, uh, the scheme that's out there. Uh, but like all three phases, you know, thank goodness we don't play tomorrow because we got a long way to go for uh, Stephen to be close to talking about being the team we want to be. 
you have two defensive backs in Rodney Shelley and Clayton Powell Lee, who <coughs> played as true freshmen. And it's, it seems like they've made progress from the first year into the second year. What are you looking for them as far as leadership and, and uh, you know, making plays for you back there? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, you know, leadership. I, I want to see them make plays first. I mean, I want to see those guys be on the field consistently and uh, consistently do their job, make plays. Um, I've been very pleased with Rodney. Uh, Rodney's been rolling with a group of three guys that are really rolling with those, those first corners. Uh, made a really nice play on the ball today down in the red zone. Uh, you know, tremendous special teams value that he brings. Uh, Clayton, kind of the same same thing. You know, he had a had a play on Wednesday where he came up and uh, had a one on one with Eric in the open field and, and made the tackle in open space. And I mean, I was just pleased as punch about that. Now, I mean, to see to see that to see the. Uh, the technique and the tackling um, that that's the, 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 that they're being taught, and then be able to see it executed. So, you know, leadership's not something you just expect from somebody. Yeah. You can't demand leadership from somebody. Uh, leadership comes from, you know, over time earning respect and trust to your teammates. Um, you know, right now it's about seeing who can go out and play the right type of football. You know, be fundamentally sound, play with great effort. Uh, you know, be be tough, show toughness, play with discipline, uh, and, and as, we, as we go through spring and, and summers, where leadership really starts to, to kick in. That's where you, when coaches aren't around and you have you know player led drills. That, that's where you really start to see the leadership kick in. And uh, I think we got some guys that have a chance to be good leaders on this team. How do you evaluate? Uh, scrimmages when you watch the film in spring versus say summer when you're closer to you know the season and game time is it different at all are you looking for different things because of the timeline or is it pretty much the standard same? is the standard either do it or you don't see it right or wrong I don't care if it's in January March May April August or December right? there's only one way to do things it's the right way it's the way your coach to do uh, doesn't matter if it's the ones out there the threes out there all right everyone's coached the same everyone's given the same information um, Everyone's given the same amount of time to learn. All right, everyone's given practice reps. All right, so no, there's zero difference in, in, in the way that uh, things are evaluated. And I think that's a, that's something hard for people to understand at times. I think it was hard for me to understand as a young coach um, that regardless of who's on the field, regardless of what time of year it is, you know, the standard is what it is. All right, there's a certain standard that everyone has to uh, play to every single day. Everyone has to coach to every single day. Uh, and, and as soon as one person in in the organization takes that. They often think that it's not important that they uh, are at the highest level and the very best that they can be as an individual. All right, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a crack in the in in the in the ship, and we, we can't allow that. That's my job as a head football coach, is to make sure that every single day everybody walks through those doors, right? And we're at the standard we are. And you say, well, it is the standard, very cliche term. Well, standards be better than you were the day before and be the absolute best you can be that day. I didn't have one, but sure, oh, yeah. Sorry, no, it's good. He can make something up. I know yeah, he can. I can. Sorry about that. Well, you mentioned recruits being here almost every single day. How is that going? You feel like you're close to starting to build out this class? Close to start building. I mean, we've had more kids on campus in the last two weeks than we've had in the last, you know, one day there was so many people uh, out of the practice and indoor. I'm flipping out. Guys getting too close to the sideline. Coach Ely comes up to me. He goes, hey, young buck. I remember when there was about 10 people here. Now we got about 300. So let's count our blessings and figure it out. <laughs> so so the, wis the wisdom that I have from Chief. So, uh, no, it's, uh, it, it has been good. It's, it's, it's good to get the players here. Um, you know, I'll, I'll roll out of here and I'll be in individual meetings probably till 5 or 6 o'clock tonight with, with, with prospects. Um, you, know, you know, getting the right guys for us here. Uh, and we, we, we're involved with a lot of really good players. But, I mean, you know, I, the worst thing in the world is to brag about being second. All right, you might as well be tenth or last. So that's all you are. All right, so our job is to recruit at the highest level we can for the best players schematically for our schemes. All right, and then the best players that fit into what we need here at Georgia Tech. And that is, you know, it's, it's a level. I mean, look, you don't you don't change where you're at in the scope of uh, anything in life, much less the scope of college football. All right, if you can continue to just be comfortable where you're at. I was curious how the two young quarterbacks. You're very look. curious today. Yeah, I am. The uh, two young quarterbacks, how are they doing? Um, obviously, you have three veteran guys ahead of them, and 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 Haynes and Zach and Brody. But 
Just where are they at? I know it's hard for a young they quarterback. A <laughs> no, they, they, they've got a lot on their plate. They really do. Uh, you know, it's a, we always go back to start at square one in, in installation, offense, defense, kicking game. All right, but when you've got a veteran group that, that uh, you know, the retention is there, the, the, the ability to process information quickly with the rest of the guys, you know, you've got to coach to a certain level, and, and Buster has to install to a certain level. And that's not the level, like I said, is you know, different than I said in recruiting. I mean, if you're going to, you know, install and coach to the level to be as you were last year, then you're never going to elevate yourself in the, in, in the scope of, or in the landscape of, of, of college football at all. So there's a lot on their plate. They've got guys in front of them that have a wealth of knowledge in the scheme. Um, it's uh, it's kind of a little bit of a unwritten tradition that the first uh, scrimmage pass of a, of a freshman is always a deep shot down the field for them. Uh, so we were over on both of them. So uh, <laughs> like I said, a lot to work on. Now those, they're they're both really good players. They are, and, and they're very fortunate to have guys in front of them that that you talk about leadership. I mean, those guys in front of them bring tremendous amount of leadership and and, and have taken them under their wing and. Uh, you know, I know their head's spinning at times, but when you know it's a little different when there's a big mistake by and you look out there and it's a freshman quarterback, freshman running back, freshman center, freshman tackle, you know, freshman receiver on the motion. A little, a little bit different reaction from me than if it's you know a seasoned vet that's out there when, when a mistake happens. Anybody else? You also have a, a new uh, receivers coach comes in with a pretty stacked group, I imagine. Um, how, how is he, you know, encouraging the competition in that group, and what have you seen from them? Yeah, well, you know, Trent came in very, uh, very open with the guys, and he said, "Look, we're about to start spring practice. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know everything. I mean, he's a tremendous coach, tremendous teacher, a tr tremendous evaluator, and recruiter, uh, and, and, and he's shown that in his history of where he's been and what he's done. And um, to be able to come in and walk into a veteran group and say, "Hey, look, I don't have all the answers right now." I'm learning this. I'm going to get caught up. Right? I'm not going to tell you guys something wrong if I don't know. But to be transparent and open, that's what I want all of our people to be. You know, we want to be black and white here in the way we talk with our kids. Uh, and for him to be able to walk in and do that and be very comfortable with himself and comfortable with, in his own skin to do that, that shows a lot of confidence as, as, a, as a coach, but also a lot of comfort, confidence as a man to be able to say those things. And But our players respect that. They understand that uh, he's a, his, his drills are very good. Uh, he does a great job of uh, coaching to the whole, not the part, meaning that he's going to coach top to bottom every person that plays receiver, um, not just uh, the guys that are on the field when you know, the first play of the game. Uh, I think the players really respect that. You see the development of uh, those guys. I mean, everybody talks about you know, you know Eric and you know Malik and those guys. I mean, well. You know, the, the, the spring so far that Avery's had and with what Avery's doing and, uh, you know, Abdul, uh, you know, Chase being back out there, Leo coming back around. I mean, just it, it's really, you know, uh, Zion, Zion Taylor. I mean, man, what a talent he is. Uh, so been really uh, – I have been pleased with that. Um, there's a running joke that we look we look the same, look like brothers. I take I take massive offense to that. I mean, I'm a much better looking, uh, no, I'm a lot fatter, older. Hey, we're from Bur hey, we're, we're both from Birmingham. I mean, come on, it's uh, that, that's about all we have in common. But now it is kind of a little running joke with those kids. Okay, got a few more episodes. Sure. We screwed up and didn't ask Winky and, and the quarterbacks about this the other day, but how are the helmet comms working? And have you guys tested that out? I haven't worn one yet. I don't know. Just kind of what has the feedback been like from the guys and how much are you trying to – I need to write that down and talk about it. I haven't talked about it yet. No. Uh, it's, it's been good. You know, I, I think I probably made a bigger deal about it coming up um, in the time I spent, you know, talking about it and staff and, you know, the process of going through it. And, uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been quick. It's been, it's been pretty seamless. Uh, I, think it's gonna, I think you're going to see a little bit of different flow of the game uh, in, in college football, both sides of the ball. I really do. Uh, you know, when when it comes direct, you know, and look, just because it you know it comes to the quarterback, the NFL. I mean, so much, so many of the teams, you know, they huddle, they get the play call, they huddle, they tell everybody. But when you're playing with tempo, when you're playing no huddle and spread, just because the quarterback gets it doesn't mean everybody else is getting it. Yeah. So there's still the same process of having to 
signals and dummy signals and uh, relaying information. So um, that's still there. The quarterback still has to get the information and process it. And look, some people are better seeing a signal and saying it to themselves than they are hearing something and then regurgitating it. So, uh, but I think I think you're going to see some differences. I do, uh, and that's what we're preparing for. We're kind of watching it now in these live situations and seeing the time of the you know play being executed, time on the clock. Uh, I think it's going to help defenses a lot with uh, things coming in. But look, it's not like you're going to be able to come out there and right before the play tell them what's going on. I mean, 15 seconds, it shuts off. So you, you still got to get the play in and get the call in pretty quickly. So. Awesome. Anything, anything else? Anything else? All right, guys, go Jackets. See you all. Thank you. Thanks, guys.